Howdy. Howdy. You made it. Yes. Earl Tatum is a 94 years old World War II veteran. Proud to be a Marine. Still a Marine. Mr. Scott. Russell Scott turns 99 this April. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. He has an interesting story. He was shot down and was captured by the Germans. You can sit beside me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hurt you. Both, both very interesting. Uh, they're friends. Uh, they do come in together sometimes, and sometimes they just come in on their own. I don't even know his story, but bombardier shot down over Italy. Prisoner of war for almost a year. Really? Wow. Well, Russell Scott was born and lived right here in Richmond, Virginia. And what's amazing is he lived and worked about six blocks from the Virginia War Memorial when World War II started in 1941. So if you ever go to the War Memorial, the stand back. Okay. there is his B-25, there's a replica of his B-25 hanging over the War Memorial. Russell went into the uh, Army Air Corps, and sadly, on his second mission over Foggia, Italy, he was shot down. The plane was hit. Uh, they knew that they had to uh, abandon the plane to bail out. And Russell, as the tail gunner, was having trouble getting out, getting the canopy off the, the rear of the plane. He actually started smashing it with his head. And uh, was able to, to break free and climbed out and sat on the tail, which to Russell, it seemed like an eternity, but it was probably only about five seconds that he sat there. And you could see his little feet sticking off the back. Yeah, it's gonna crash. And, uh, and Russell only saw a few people actually bail out. The majority of his crew did not make it that day. For Russell, it was, uh, it was a struggle for survival. So Russell jumped, and as he's drifting down to the ground, he lands on a hill. Hitting the ground, you know, his, his back broke. And he said he tried to call, uh, crawl away. And as he's crawling away, German soldiers uh, started shooting at him. And he said he raised his hands to the best of his ability and said, you know, comrades, comrades, I, I surrender, basically. And, um, you know, the Germans made him a POW for almost a year. I got to the prison camp on the 18th of June, 1944. The morning we were liberated, we had to go out to roll call. And we stood there crying. Yeah, I can still remember it. And, it kind of kind of gets to you. Something about Russell that he doesn't usually talk about is that Russell was married when he went into the service. And while he was a prisoner of, of war, his wife left him. He didn't know it until he came home and found out that she was gone. For the first time since Pearl Harbor, the dome of the United States Capitol in Washington is illuminated, signaling the unconditional surrender of Germany. Lighted, too, is the Statue of Liberty. The war against Japanese aggression and brutality now goes forward with new vigor and undivided power. That's Guadalcanal. Which one was first, Terawa or Guadalcanal? Guadalcanal. Was first? Earl Tatum was a young Marine. Earl's very proud that he survived invasions at two islands of death, as he likes to call them, Tarawa and Guadalcanal. September the 13th saw the island of Guadalcanal enveloped in the fog of war. On the 20th of November, 1943, American Marines launched an amphibious assault on the island of Tarawa. This was invasion, invasion against fierce opposition. Earl is an amazing person. Earl is one of the few people on this earth that has gone ashore in an invasion, going right up to the enemy, experiencing hand-to-hand -hand combat and surviving. Over a thousand Marines were killed, 2,500 wounded in the 76 hours of battle. But 6,000 Japanese were wiped out by the air sea bombardments and by the Marines after they landed and got in among the enemy, killing them in savage hand-to-hand -hand combat. You know, we see things like Saving Private Ryan, where you see so many men cut down the moment they get off the transport. And yet Earl survived withering fire and got ashore, did fight hand to hand, 
and Earl was up to the challenge and survived. Uh, Earl was quite a warrior. And yet here he is, a, a gentle man. Earl has continued to, you know, dedicate himself to school programs. Uh, every program that I've asked Earl to come to the last four years, he has said yes. Uh, no matter how he felt, he was going to be there. Russell's here every Wednesday and faithfully. Russell dedicated his life to telling his story, but at the same time, not just sharing his story, but explaining how important service was and love of country and patriotism. And, and Russell just embodies all of those things. And you know, here he is 99 years old and he's still teaching. He still goes out to schools. Uh, we invite him to events and, and he says, I'll be there, you know, I'll be at the event. And he'll spend as much time as people want, you know, just talking about service and talking about his experiences. If I could have your attention for one moment, we have two very special guests with us today. And it also happens to be their birth birthdays this month. For these men who carried the scars of war, Russell with his broken back, you know, he lost his wife, Earl with visions of hand-to-hand -hand combat, you know, these things didn't go away. They stayed with them the rest of their lives. But if you asked Russell and Earl and the other World War II veterans, if you had to do, do it over again, would you do it? Every single one of them says, yes, I would, because they believed in this country and they loved this country and they believed in what they were doing. I mean, they were setting people free and they believed in that. It's a great generation. Uh, happy birthday and thanks for your service. I recently read a statistic that said 98% of all World War II veterans have passed. And I'll attend a reunion with World War II veterans and sometimes just stand outside a large room where they're sitting, having breakfast. And you can hear their voices and you pick up on pieces of different stories. And you realize that very soon those voices will be silenced. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in honoring our country as we do every day at noon. So it's, it's very important that we you know, talk to them now, thank them now, spend time with them now, and uh, really, really honor them. And 